It's been a long time. I've been away for a while. I think I started to suffer what they call YouTube burnout. I really get that now. I've just arrived back from Vietnam from an amazing week at the NFQ Global Summit. NFQ is a global tech company. My wife is the founder in residence, the director here for Thailand Operations. We all traveled to Vietnam this past week and the attendees came from all over the world and the speakers. The founder of NFQ, Lars Jankowski, asked me if I might speak at the conference. Now, it was an honor to be invited, but I thought, well, normally my presentations are about language, what can I do? And he said, just find something that's gonna blow them away. And so I thought, well, we've got data, we have tech, data structures, and internal tech inside of us and language and tech. It's all about patterns and finding things that matching, being able to exploit those things. And so what I did was try and put a presentation together, which I think is the perfect marriage between data, data structures, tech, language, mind skills, pattern matching, and all with a dash of pop culture, Lord of the Rings. By the end of this clip today, you're going to be able to not only read that script, but you're going to be able to use that script to read other languages very clearly, like Vietnamese, Russian, Sanskrit, Thai, Chinese, in a manner that's much closer to the way that native speakers articulate their own languages rather than a foreigner learning language. I got the idea because this is actually one of the modules in season five of Minecraft. If you haven't joined Minecraft yet, click in the link in the description below. We have tons of people in there. We're about to start a new season, but even if you subscribe now, you'll get access to all of the past content, which will blow your mind and give you a skill set to be able to learn any language as you move forward. Okay, let's start from Elvish to Vietnamese, leveraging tech to master multiple foreign languages. And there you have my name. These are all the names that I'm kind of known by. Stuart J. Raj, of course, is my uh, real name. J. Raj is in Sanskrit or in Hindi. And so J meaning victory, which is the same word we have in Thai, by the way, Chai. Uh, people in Thailand call me J or J Rat and Chinese Wang Huai Le. Now, the reason I have these three here, I've got Wang Huai Le is Mandarin, here is Wong Wai Lok, if you speak Cantonese, and below is the Vietnamese version of those Han words. So we have Vung Huai Nha. Now, I have that there, that to a Vietnamese person right now, that would look very strange, but those sound shifts you see there are all going to make sense by the end of this. One last thing I'd mention here, you can see this up top, this is the Tenghua script. And by the end of this, as I mentioned, you're going to be able to read it and even decipher that. Not only will we be able to decipher that little bit of text up there, but you'll be able to read this entire message here, which is written in the Tenghua script. The beautiful thing about this script is, is that it's a modal script. You can use it just like we can use the Latin script to write French, Italian, English, German, and the letters play different functions. That happens with the Tenghua script too. So we can actually use this script in a way that we want to use it. And once you learn the system, it's mind blowing. And you might even learn this script as a base script to learn other languages. So if you want to know what that says, wait until the end of this clip and you'll be able to read it yourself. So here you see rotating is this Tenghua script. Now, when I look at this script, I'm reminded of Lord of the Rings. My precious, and you've got the ring there and the script around it. And when I look at this, I think of my wife. It's a very emotional uh, feeling that I feel. Uh, now my wife, and she's a very strong woman, but she also has a soft spot. That is Lord of the Rings. And she loves anything to do with Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, so much so that on our wedding ring, we actually got the script engraved on it. I actually wrote a message, I encoded it, 3D rendered it, and we got our wedding ring encoded with what you see around the picture here. That is actually the script that went onto our ring. So that's not the script that you'll see in the movie, that's actually our wedding ring script. That's the ring from Lord of the Rings, and so the scripts are different, but by the end of this, you'll be able to read that too. 
So this is an interactive clip on YouTube. So as you're watching this, unless you're driving, I want you to look at your hands because the way that Tolkien designed this script, everything's based on these rings and you can actually pull them apart and use your hands. And so I want you to, as you look at your hands, look left and right, pull them apart, and you see this one here looks like a C and this one here it looks like I guess the front of a P. This one here when you look at it I want you to think gotcha, gotcha, okay? And then this one over here I want you to think tubby, tubby. So gotcha, tubby. Maybe you picture a telly tubby in that hand. Whatever it is that you can remember the word tubby. So we have gotcha, tubby, gotcha, tubby. And so first of all, we're just going to look at this side. This is the gotcha side. Now, you can see it kind of looks like a C, but I actually want you to think of this initially as the bass throat, okay? Now, this isn't a foreign concept. This is actually a very common concept across scripts that use an abugida or syllabary. So right now, we're just gonna say this is uh, the bass voice, uh, uh, like a schwa there. For anyone who's done yoga or gotten into any kind of meditation, maybe you've seen this symbol. This is the OM symbol. Now this OM is made up of different portions. This part is the uh, uh bass voice. This is the OM and this bit is the nasalization with the anusvara there. So that's OM making this perfect sound going to the universe. If you read Hindi, you would know this is the bass voice here. That's a uh or a. Uh. Sometimes it's written as an A. We use this as the bass voice for Hindi or Sanskrit. Um, in Thai, we have this. It actually looks closer to that. It's this bass voice. And in Korean, it's even closer to that. It's just a ring, which is the bass voice position. Now, for the Tenghua script, we use this. So it's kind of like the Thai, Korean, it's a mixture. Just think bass voice is this. So let's just put that aside for a moment. And now you can see, if I put my finger up here, it almost looks like a C and kind of the first bit of an H. I want you to think palate. So where is your palate? Get your tongue, roll it back from your teeth and you can feel this bump here. That's the alveolar ridge. And so if you get your tongue to go across the roof of your mouth like a manta ray, your tongue is wiping up against your palate there in the front. So that is the palate and a palatal sound. So when you look at this, I want you to think that's the manta ray going up there. So this is any kind of those kind of sounds from the roof of your mouth like that with a flat tongue, they're palatized. So think palate. So when you see that, think Okay. Now, you can see here we have the palate, but then this is the back of the throat. Now, anyone who speaks Korean might think, oh, that looks very familiar. Funny that. Um, so that is the back of the throat. So from the palate, we go to, it's just the tongue on this vela position. So let's look at this. Okay, that's easy. So that's why we've got gotcha. Gotcha is a word that will help you get your tongue in place. It's not the G from English, so to speak, or the ch from gotcha, whatever that is. It's just to get your tongue in the position of the vela, the back of the throat, and then the palate. Now, next, we have the teeth. Now you can see this has gone from here to here. Now remember we said tubby. Now we say t from the alveolar ridge again, t, t, t in English, but in Sanskrit say t, t, it's from the teeth. So we call this a dental sound, t. So when you look at this, think is this is maybe is the teeth coming up, t, 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 or t, you can, however you want to say it, t. Now the thing is, I'll say here, let's do it with a stop throat. So if you say the word stick, stick, t, t, you'll hear it like that, t. Duh. Almost like a D, but there's no voice. If it were a D, it would be D, D. But this is D. Or you can do it from your T. Either way. But this is D. This way with that. And then just like we close the top off for the K, for the lips, you can see the lips have this line on the bottom. So line on the top, 
is a vela or like a unaspirated K. Line on the bottom is lips. So let's just drill that a little bit. How do you feel? So what I did, if you scan this QR code, I actually built a website using Svelte. That was the tech part too. I use data structures and I love coding in Svelte just for really fast, nice looking apps. And so you will see, and so this app here, I've got it locally, but you'll be able to click on it too. Um, you can actually use a normal keyboard to start typing. And so the letters for those ones are N is for the K. H is your ch. Y is the p. and then up top uh, on the number six is p. so you can practice typing some of those and if you want to save say a word or those letters there you can just um, either click on it if you're on your phone or just tap that and it will save it here for you and you can go back and practice them. Now soon, you're going to see my glyphs here too. So this will actually render the glyphs. So as we're going along, see if you can type along with it and start practicing. You can go back and check it afterwards. So there we are at the lips. Now, if you put these in order like that, Look at this. Now, this is my glyph. I developed this glyph. That's the back of the throat. It kind of looks like that. So that's, this is the tongue coming up to the palate. If you turn it on its side, I guess it kind of looks like that. And this one is the tongue coming up to the teeth. So that's, I guess that looks like an opposite version of this. And then this is the lips. This is my glyph for lips. Now, if you've done Cracking Thai Fundamentals, you would know these. Um, and the colors are actually color coded for those points of the mouth. Or if you've done Minecraft, of course, because we use this uh, consonant compass all through Minecraft. So look at that. We have. If I put some voice. Look, it's amazing. But it wasn't Tolkien that actually invented this. This was invented by the Indians up to 3000 BC. Um, so Sanskrit was based on this, but we'll get into that in a minute. So this is a stopped throat. When I said, if you say stick or spy, the throat is stopped as opposed to p. Now, let's have a look at this. We have, if we add voice to it, now this is my glyph for voicing, you get g. So the voiced version of the back of the throat is g, g. And then we have the voice version of ch. So this, don't let it confuse you. A C by itself in IPA is actually ch, 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 This palatal sound with no voice. The voice version is j, ch, j, like a J in English. But I was with a bunch of Germans there. So when I put a J up in the presentation, it would be pronounced j. So I decided to use IPA. This is the IPA symbol for j, a voice palatal ch, j. J and Tolkien just doubled this symbol. So with the long stick down is stopped throat, doubling it voices it. So voiced stopped throat, J, J. Okay, and we can do D and B. Look at that. We're starting to get a beautiful matrix. Now, as far as data structures are concerned, you can see that you can actually start to build an array out of this mapping the human mouth. So before we go any further, we actually want to put these to use, but we need to realize what is a vowel. Well, let's have a look. In English, we have A-E-I-O-U. We see A-E-I-O-U. Those aren't pure vowels. Um, some people might say a e i o u. So we're going to use those as the base vowel sounds for here. So we have a e i o u. This is not u. We'll call it u o as opposed to o. Okay. Open mouth o. Now let's put this stick down here. That's what Tolkien uses as a vowel holder if they're by themselves. And so a three dots. 
Um, so you might think three dots looks like an arch, so it's like the letter A. So this is A. E, E goes up like that. Maybe you remember it thinking it's like that stick in the E. So that's E. A, E. E, it's like the dot on an I, and if you look at that, it almost looks like an I, so that's easy to remember. We have A, E, E, O. If you read Thai, you would know that O, Salah O goes over the word. So that's O, you might think it's going over, hooking over the letter. So that's O, 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 O. And then U. This is very common in many scripts. Uh, if you read Arabic and you've got like your Sukun, or if you read Thai, of course, Korean, the U is always going to be going down like that in Sanskrit, in Hindi, most Indic scripts, it goes down. So, O goes over, U, it hooks, and it goes like that, U, U, U. So, A, E, I, O, U. And so the way it works is we can put these vowel diacritics over the actual letters. So this is the back, so there's K, with an A is K, K, E, G. I, K, K, O, K, K, U, K, 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 How's that? Almost sounds like Japanese. K, 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 Now, we have this over the, the palatal. So, J, 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 Pretty cool, huh? So, just showing you that it's nothing really that unique. This is the Devanagari from thousands of years ago, um, how it was written. They look almost identical, except you have this, we call it the Virama stroke on top here. You take that off, it looks very similar. Um, so that's Jap with no symbol. E, the stroke goes this way in Tengwar, it goes that way in Devanagari. Or it's on this side, other scripts it's on this side. So um, E. You've got a dot here. Now, in most I, you'll find like a bubbling at the top here. And O, like I mentioned, you see the O, that's pretty much this shape, just stylized here. So, ja, te, ti, jo, ju. This is Gujarati. They don't have this Virama stroke. And it looks almost the same, except this bit is twisted around. Ja, te, ti, jo, ju. This is Thai. Ja, te, ti, jo. Uh, I've got jo, ju there. Um, this again is this palatized sound. So pretty cool. We can start to read Korean. Look at my glyph there, the tongue coming up, which I'll go, sorry, I'll just go back there. But if you have a look at Korean, you can see da, de, di, jo, oh, that's jo and jo. So Korean uses the same principle. Again, this goes down, that goes down. You saw in the Devanagari just now, it's the same. So let's try and start reading some things. So what is this? We have a k, a, ga, and this is the t. Remember, this is the stroke going down for the teeth. So gat, gat, or gat, if you want aspirated, but I would read that as gat. If I want to make it voiced, gat. So the difference between this, gat, versus gat. G, k, g, unvoiced, voiced. Gat, gat, okay? Get, so the word to get. What would that be? Well, that's the lips. That is a dot, and this is a, k, so that would be big, big. And then if I have voicing at the end now, pig, pig, so it's a pig. So, the next question is, are these actual vowels? Now, if I say the word day, now, because we have Germans, I changed the Y to a J. If I say the word day, is the Y in day a vowel or a consonant? Is the W in the word how, H-O-W, a vowel or a consonant? Well, it's kind of a vowel, but we're told it's a consonant. Uh, well, the Indians thought the same. So they said, well, let's call these semi-vowels. They're kind of a vowel, kind of a consonant, doesn't quite make it. So we'll just call them semi-vowels. I use this symbol for semi-vowel in my glyphs. And so the semi-vowels are written like this. It's that base shape that we saw in the beginning. And so this now, the palatal j, j, semi-vowel version is y, j, j, y. You can see the y, y is coming from this palate. And that's why when we do palatization in languages like Russian, y, y, it's all from these palatal sounds. Y, y is the tool to palatize other letters. The semi-vowel 
from the teeth, the, the, l, is l, and the semi-vowel from the lips, b, b, w. So here we have three semi-vowels, the palatal, y, dental, l, and the lips, w. Wow, our matrix is growing. And so now, if we have this stop throat that we mentioned before, and then we aspirate it. So you might think of aspiration, it's blowing. It's blowing air through there. Sometimes that might cut through, it depends. So k turns to k. Some languages, they might call the aspirated version h from the back of the throat. So let's just do it somewhere between k, k. So we have k, unaspirated, k, k, aspirated. So I use these two strokes in my glyphs as uh, aspiration, a puff of hair. And we can aspirate the voiced version as well. So we have g, 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 g. So unaspirated, g, k, g, g, or g, g. Uh, depending what language you're speaking, you can make this script work for you. We've got the same for all of them. So now we have stop throat, aspirated, voiced, voice aspirated, and semi vowel. So have a look at this. G, k, g, g. Ja, cha, ja, 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 da, ta, da, da, la, ba, pa, ba, pa, wa. Now we're missing one. And if you speak Thai, Burmese, any Indic language, you'd think, wait, there's one column missing. And that column comes from what we see here in this on. Oh, that's the nasalization dot. Okay, so it's an, we call it anuswara, a small voice. And so what happens in Sanskrit, say, um, this little dot here, we can use it as a tool. So if I said, hello, my name is Stuart, have a nice day. And all of a sudden I put these dots on it. Uh, now they look a little different in Sanskrit. That is a tool to throw it out the nose. So, hello, my name is Stuart, have a nice day. That is a nasalization tool. Nasalization is key to any of our languages, uh, you'll notice in French, oh, oh, oui, oui, it's all for the things. And so by putting this dot here, I use this circle with a dot in it as my nasalization symbol. Nasalization is basically it's voice because you've got to use your voice. So I use this voice tool, but just cut the stem off. So this is the nasalization of the back of the throat. So ka ka ga ga nga. Now, a lot of people, when they learn languages like Vietnamese or Thai and they see NG, they'll say NG, because this G is just um, shouting at them to pronounce G. It's not G, it's NG, it's soft. Ga, 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 nga. Nasal from the back of the throat. Cha, 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 nya. Ba, ba, ah, sorry. Da, ta, da, da, na. Nasal from the teeth is an N. And then from the lips, ba, 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 nasal lips, Ma. So the letter M is a nasalized lips. Letter N, nasalized dental. N, N, N. This is a nasalized palate. N, and then NG sound mm, is nasalized velar or from the back of the throat. So look at that. That is an amazing system that Tolkien has been able to map out with the Tengwa script there. Now, let's have a look and start pronouncing words with it or syllables. So we've got our vowels there down the bottom. We have a, e, i, o, u. And so if we read this, what have we got? We've got the vowel stem and that's like the e from the e. So that's e. What's this? This double. I know as soon as I see double, I think voice. So mm, I'm using my voice and the voice is from this. Remember tabi, so from the lips. So what is voiced? teeth and because there's no long stroke we know it's nasal so it's this one here mm. so that says n what about this that's e again what's this lips and aspiration up so we could be p or f n f and then what's that that's the back of the throat k e and that's lips um semi vowel w so q so n f Q. That's the name of my wife's company where I did the uh, summit uh, presentation in Vietnam. And so NFQ, if written phonetically in the Tenghua script, would be written like that NFQ. And that's in fact what was on that first slide screen for the opening of this presentation. NFQ. Look at that again. NFQ. Awesome. So moving ahead, Tolkien, he wasn't some genius that invented this from scratch. He was on the shoulders of giants. 
Indian giants. Uh, from thousands of years ago, they actually developed this system uh, where we had one more point. Now, this one, I've got the tongue sort of folding back on the roof of the mouth. You'll hear Indians say, ta, ta, da, da, na. What is it? That comes from this cerebral retroflex sound. Now, look at the T here. It's got a long stick as opposed to a short stick on a normal T. That shows that these are these retroflex sounds. Ta, ta, da, da, da. Now, the R for the Tengwa script, if you read Hebrew, you would notice this letter here. Um, it's not the same sound. I guess he just likes the shape, but that's the R, and that's from the roof of the mouth. Ha. Huh. It looks like the lambda, if you're a coder, it looks like what we use for lambda functions, but he used that for the H sound, just picking a symbol and throwing it there. I often say when talking about Abu Gidas, you know, you want to make anything. I could say that this phone stand is going to represent the sound B. And then every time you see that, think of B. And that's exactly what Tolkien's done here. He's just taken some random symbols and throw them in there. If you read Arabic, you'd think, what? Wait a minute, that looks like the um, H sound. If you put a dot in it, it's Jim on top, it's H. But he said, no, nah, I'm going to make that the U sound. So we could say this is U or that. And then this is the S, sibilant sound. Sibilant is the word we use for S-y kinds of sounds. And that's basically the whole alphabet. There are a couple of ones missing, but we've got enough to work with to write almost any word now. So, as I mentioned, the Indians came up with this system a long time ago. And uh, you can see here, this is Brahmi. Brahmi was the original script used to write Indic languages, write Sanskrit and then later on other things. And have a look here, this is that J. It kind of looks like Tolkien's version um, in a stylized way. And you'll see often the M is kind of representing bubbling lips because it's M, 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 and W is usually related in some way because that's the semi-vowel version. Um, y is usually a fork. And you can see here in Brahmi, it's a fork. And in many other scripts, it's a fork as well. Uh, but it's just crazy that even though this is thousands of years old, scripts today still bear resemblance to many of these base shapes. I call these primitive shapes for Indic scripts. Uh, if we want to look at some more, this is the modern Devanagari script that we use to write Hindi, Nepali, um, Sanskrit. When you see it written now, it's probably going to be written like this, but it can use other scripts as well. Um, but that is the same. Ka, ka, ga, ga, nga. These are all just shapes to represent the same sounds. If we have a look at Thai, again, uses exactly the same uh, format, the same data structure to represent the sounds. Now in Thai, we had this stop throat D. It was actually an N. Um, oh, here it is, an N mm, with a stop throat, D, 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 instead of D, 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 which we have in English where you hear this ticking, t -t -t. ties will say a stop throat N, da, da, it's very soft. And so this is common across Vietnamese um, and other languages in this part of the world, other Chinese dialects, so that was included, the D sound was included in this first stop throat column. And you can see for these ones that are related, they just get the shape and said, okay, we're going to use this shape and just give it a dent in its head. Or for this B, stop throat M, M, B, we're just going to extend its tail or shrink its tail from the B. Of course, P is usually this cup shape. Even if you look, see, you've got the cup shape there for Devanagari. Um, you've got this cup shape there, even from Brahmi thousands of years ago. So again, these scripts are using these primitive shapes to render the same sounds or very similar sounds. This is Korean. Look, we've got the cup shape again for P, J. Look at that. My glyphs, where did they come from? Well, I did get inspired from what King Sejong the Great did, but he actually was inspired with his team. If you've seen the movie, um, The King's Letters, uh, it's on how this script evolved and it came from the Pakspa script, which was another Indic script used to write Mongolian and Sanskrit. And so this is Korean, M, R, it's the rolly tongue. Y, you can see two spikes for palatization. Different tools, N, it's the same as the teeth, except taking the top off here. So in Korean, we have this as well, and of course the bass voice, uh. If uh is at the end, the voice mm, is that NG or back of the throat sound. Believe it or not, Russian runs on this same system. So we have ga, ha, ga, ch, ch. And 
when I learned Russian, I was blown away because many of the spelling rules, say for softening or palatization, you'll realize that this Mjakisnak, uh, which is a softener letter, um, when you learn Russian, they give you, it seems like arbitrary letters that it can and cannot be used with. But if you think of this Indic map, um, well, basically, these two rows here don't use Mjakisnak, and it works. Um, and many of the other rules will fit within this map as well. When I learned um, Russian, or as I was learning, I don't speak it fluently yet, but I'm blown away by how many similarities there are between Russian and Sanskrit. Have a look at this. Like, to know, we have um, Vedat in Russian, and here we have Veti in Sanskrit. Uh, Veshat Vishati, Vedenye Vedana. Vopricit, uh, we have Vopricati. Prashit, shit for Vopricit, if it were the full palatal, Vopricati. It's the same word. That, to give dati. Again, palatization over the T. It's crazy. Dom for house, Dhamma. Um, these are all from this same old Indo European, um, original Proto Indo European language. Uh, other similarities, now I've got Lithuanian, there were many Lithuanians, uh, NFQ has a, an office there, so I included this as well. These are the case declensions for Sanskrit, Russian, and Lithuanian. Look at that, dom. So the nominative, dama, dom, namas. Now look at this, the Lithuanians have gone the other way. You know how in Thai we turned an N to a D? N, D. The Lithuanians have turned this D to an N, the N. So it gets nasalized, so the word... Um, here, dama becomes namas in uh, Lithuanian for the nominative, nominative. But let's have a look at, say, the locative here. So, at the house. Dame, dome, name. That's crazy. Lithuanian is almost like this middle block between Sanskrit and um, Russian that we can see there. Now, Lithuanian saying it's not a normal Slavic language too. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying these have all stemmed from this old Proto-European and we can see how it's evolved into these today. Crazy. And we're rendering it using a script based on the map. So Russian can actually be mapped one-to-one -to, -one to these places on the map in this um, compass that we use to write the Tenguar Lord of the Rings script. Amazing. Um, not only Russian, we have Chinese as well. So for anyone who's learned Chinese, you may have learned um, That is this map in reverse. We've got the lips It goes backwards to finally the back of the throat. But this is Mandarin, but it gets better. If you have a look at old Chinese, it was actually much more complete and they could actually write dictionaries. This is an old Cheyun dictionary from Middle Chinese that used this same thing. And again, it's color coded. We have the lips, the palate, the teeth here, the back of the throat. It's the same map used to write dictionaries and map out the sounds of Chinese and the tones. That is crazy. As you get into the tones, you realize the tones are actually mapped around this, whether something's voiced, unvoiced, whether it's um, got air puffing would change the tone. And so it fits beautifully into this map. Here I've got the Vietnamese. Um, so this is uh, Cantonese in yellow, Vietnamese in uh, blue. Now don't let the G fool you in Cantonese. It's actually an unaspirated K. So this is Kin Kin Kai He. Um, these have evolved, but you can see Vietnamese for these same words are very, very similar. The word for day, um, we have the word ya in Cantonese, nhe in Vietnamese. We have this one, nung Cantonese, nung in Vietnamese. The similarities are crazy. If you speak Cantonese and Thai, learning Vietnamese is actually quite easy because it's a lot of words from these synetic words using the Yue pronunciations, but with more Thai grammar. That is crazy, look at that. These can map to that and the tones were actually based on this. The way the tones work is we have the voiced here, we have the unvoiced, and so the ones that were voiced, they would tend to go down lower and the words that were, un sorry, go high, and the ones that were unvoiced went down there. So we had the yin and the yang, and they form two different registers in the voice. 
and then you'd have these tones, ping shang chu ru, ping shang chu ru. So even the tones of Chinese, Vietnamese, Thai, they can all be mapped beautifully to this map which the Tolkien script is based on, which means you could technically use the Tenghua script um, that Tolkien designed to write any of these tonal languages and it would be pretty accurate. So this that we see here is modern Vietnamese and the way it maps to this, it actually maps pretty well. So you could technically use the Tenghua script to write Vietnamese and get it pronounced properly. Now, because we're in Vietnam and I noticed that there were a lot of foreigners that struggled to pronounce, even though it's Latin script, pronounce these Vietnamese words correctly. What happens, they would like look at this word and they'll say, we're going to Na Trang, just reading it from English orthography. Now, if we have a look here, what is this? Well, that's a palate nasal nye. So this is nye. TR, TR, if we look at this as one block, where is it coming from? Well, here, this is a t, just a palette. So this would be nha chang, nha chang, not nha trang, okay, nha chang. So we can use this map to help overcome the influence from our mother tongue, if it were English, say, in mispronouncing languages like Vietnamese and start pronouncing them properly. Let's have a look at this. So this is another place that a lot of people go to. It's a island, in, beautiful island in Vietnam. This is what? Well, PH is the first, so that's four, four, and what's this? Q. Q is this stopped throat from the back of the throat, so that becomes Fu Quoc, Fu Quoc, Fu Quoc. So it's not Fu Quoc, I'm going to Fu Quoc. It's not Fu Quoc, unaspirated K. Fu Quoc, not Fu Quoc, like we would say in English. So, and then we have, just like I mentioned in Thai, a D with a line through it is not a D like in English. So you can't say something like D, the word to go is D with that line through it, I. It's not D, D, it's D, cut my throat off with an N and then the imploder, D, 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 where are you going? D, 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 not D. So as a learner of Vietnamese, if you're coming from, say, a European language background, map it to this first, not through your mother tongue sound system, and you'll never make these pronunciation mistakes. This D here now, I know it's stop throat from here, D. I know this is from the back of the throat, nasal, Mwah. not ng, ng, it's ng. So here we have the word to go out for fun. This is D J D J. The O with a line through it, by the way, is this er uh, er uh sound here. So that's the J, the which means to go out for fun. Coming back to this now, what does it read? Well, we've got the back of the throat, semi vowel because there's no stem, and that's the a. Uh, so it's what two lines here. So that means that it's voiced what a uh, from the teeth one one. So if we break it down here. We can see one summit to rule them all. And it was a pretty awesome summit last. So it was indeed one summit to rule them all. So how's that? This is how I finished off the slides over there. This is come on. And again, you can see this is not come on or come on. This is an unaspirated. So this is come on, come on, come on. Thank you from the word gan en in Chinese. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Lars asked me to do something that would blow people's mind and put it together. So hopefully for at least the tech crowd, this was something new combining tech, language, pop culture, uh, pattern matching and mind skills all together to give you something useful. If you did like this and you're thinking, hmm, I actually want to learn languages now or get further into this, come to jacademy.com and become part of the Minecraft program. It's really worth it. Uh, we're about to start our new season, but you can access all of this, including the modules on the Tenghua script. And who knows, you might have a new lease on language to open opportunities to you that you never knew existed. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side.